it, you've seen it all over the world. I mean, things like McDonald's, I'm loving it. I mean, how can we create these, just, just these small things that have managed to, to um, change businesses throughout life? I mean, because life's complicated enough. And we all remember, all oh, because the lady loves it. Still going on. It just takes one idea. I mean, the, 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 this I, I, I couldn't find a modern version of what Avis did. Now, you know, Avis did this in 1963, and it, and it carried on for 50 years. And it just took one person to come along and say, Avis is, uh, is, uh, is not only number two in rental harvest uh, uh, because it's number two, it needs to try harder. And that turned the market share round massive just because of that one slogan. And then they carried it on, for, as I said, for the next 50 years and changed the complete car industry. So I try and find something a little bit different. And so just a very brief little bit about me. I don't want to be too boring, but I got two O levels and two A levels. Um, so you know, I, I, I've never done a science in my life. Um, I managed to scrape a degree in um, dietary, which was feet. Um, I then got a Desmond Tutu. We called it Desmond in those days. I got a Desmond Tutu, um, at BSc honours, and I opened my first squat practice when I was 21 in property, and that paid my way through dentistry for the next five years. Um, in 1999, I did my VT in Penzance, and I, in uh, the year 2000, I bought my first five-bedroom house on the main street in Plymouth. I had no clue about business. I thought, right, I'm just going to buy the house. Um, you know, everyone was calling me crazy. Um, I didn't know how to cash up. I didn't know what a projection was. And do you know what? To this day, I still don't know how to cash up, and I still don't know what a projection was. I get my accountant to do all that. You know, there was a really interesting um, uh, thread on one of the groups the other day. How do we create an amazing uh, projection? I have a clue. Um, like I said, it, it, you know, it's something I ask someone else to do. I've invented things that have flopped, an impression tray. I nearly sold it to one of the large companies, but last minute it fell off. I've employed beauty, beauticians. I've started the dietary businesses, and I've also started recruitments. It has not always been success. There have been a, an enormous amount of flops, but you know, the one thing that I can say throughout all of it is I have found the marketing advertising, the bit that's exciting, the bit that really drives me. I don't know what it is. I think it's the art about it. Some people like to cut a nice filling, you know, make a nice denture, make a nice crown. I've always liked to make a nice advert, and I don't know why it drives me so that it does. But you know what? If I can do it, anyone can, um, and I mean that. And, and I always go, my saying, it ain't rocket science. It isn't rocket science to build a business. It isn't rocket science to build to bring patients in. It just takes that small little bit of passion. Someone just should maybe just show you, but it does take a little bit of passion. And five percent, it ain't rocket science. So if you've always done do if, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. And you know, I so believe in this. The amount of courses that I've been on, and you leave so fired up, ready to go. You're ready to go. You get back to work. And it all just goes by the wayside and you've forgotten it and you, 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 know, you can't seem to find that enthusiasm you had when you when you went to that course or you talked to that person and it just sometimes something can light inside of you and you do push it but the reason for that is it takes 66 days for you to change that habit whether it's stopping drinking stopping smoking keeping fit losing weight apparently the psychologists say it's 66 days so when you've been on that course or you've finished today and there's something you like and you want to try 66 days you have to do it every single day for that then to become a habit for then that to become growth and that to become part of you but you know what the ship's not sailed it's not too late for you i don't know though i look at stuff like this and i think it is getting too late for me i look at my daughters coming in and they're, they're doing all this TikTok stuff and i think that's not my time i don't want to be doing this TikTok. but still we, you know I, one day i will have to address this TikTok stuff and that day will come, but I'll pay someone else to do it because he can be bloody me. So these are my top ten tips and tricks. Um, you know, I have, I have a, actually, I have a top fifty. Drew invited me up to London, which I love. I always love the studio box. They are so fired up. So I have fifty of them, and so I try to whittle it down to ten. And I'm going to try and keep to my half an hour. So if I run over, I'll, I'll speed over the rest, rest of the last few slides. So we'll start off at number one. I think, you know, don't slag off your competitor. Everybody does it. I don't know why they do it. Um, you know, I've had a local, a, a, a local practitioner try and throw me under the bus. You don't do it. It's, it's not only unprofessional, but it's free advertising for them. If you have a look here, this was someone that actually said about my practice. It's a load of shite. Don't go there. Now, you'd think, well, I'm not too happy about that. But three hours later, how much would a full set of dentures be with you? Thank you. So I actually made four patients that have one practitioner slagging me off. You don't also slag anyone off because it's not very pleasant. But like I said, 
don't get onto anyone's feed, don't share your feed with anyone. And like I've always said to dentists, if dentists put a nice picture up of their teeth, don't go and like it, don't go and comment, because the minute you do that, you share all your likes, all your shares, all your patients you've built up over years, you're delivering it to that other dentist. Go in the background, put a nice little messenger on and say what a beautiful post it was. Number two, modify your exam template. Now this is the absolute winner. If, you, if you're not quite good at selling, and I know that Ash is going to come on to how to do that, but if you aren't very good at selling in the practice and you want to use it for a clinical purpose, what you can do is you can alter your exam template so your nurse can actually be asking you um, how the patient is or you do a clinical exam so you can say extra oral, how's the patient, and, and you'll go yes, extra oral, clear, they'll say intra oral, how much crowding is on the lower arch, they'll say well there's six millimetres of crowding, and then ask the nurse then to ask you, well, if there's six millimetres of crowding, is there gingivitis? Now, suddenly, the patient's ears might prick up with the gingivitis. Is there bleeding on probing? Well, yes, there is bleeding on probing. Are there, are there any gaps present? There's a gap in the top right. Is there risk of overall rupture? Now, this nurse is asking you about the clinical effects or the clinical issues the patient has. By the time you've sat the patient up, the patient will then be asking you questions. Mm -hmm. Then you, if you find it difficult to bring those type of conversations up, if you haven't got someone like actually to help you, then, you know, that, that, that has started the ball rolling. So I think number three, people do forget about traditional, um, traditional types of marketing. They go to social media marketing, TikTok, as I said. I mean, I try and do probably 50% of mine is social media and the other 50% I've always done more of the, um, the traditional types. So, I mean, broadcast media, parish magazines are probably the cheapest, albeit they're very, 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 very dull and boring, but they're the cheapest type of marketing. It's probably, I think the last magazine I, 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 I took out, it was £80 for an entire page for a year. Now, the amount of um, implants I got from that one uh, uh, advert was, it was unbelievable because the oldies will read the parish magazines from beginning to end on the toilet until their bums are numb as well as the free magazines. Stop going for the glossy magazines. Go for parish magazines, the free magazines. That's where the golden nuggets are. That's where you will be able to find cheap marketing. And remember, like I said, of number six there, always put them in upside down. Um, the reason for that is they'll turn the page the right way up and your, your advert is the only one upside down, the, the only one the right way around. So make sure you look for the cheaper ways to market. I mean, I remember when I when I when I start all, all of my squats, I used to go around all the waiting room GPs, um, all the all the GP rooms. And then I'd go in and find if they're all black and white, I would I would ask if I could put a colour one up. If they were all colour, I'd put a black and white one up. So the waiting room in the GPs is a really successful way to start building general dentistry because people are sitting there doing nothing. They don't want to touch the magazines anymore, and now there are no magazines in GP practices. So if you end up going in there, you don't want to be touching anything, and you're just going to be looking around. So make sure that you make friends with the local GPs. Get, you know, get the posters up there. They don't care. They're not bothered. They want to fill a hole in the wall. I mean, the other, the other way that I used to start marketing, I used to start advertising people, was actually a fax. Now, faxes is a good way to stop because people can't ignore it. It's there. It's in hard copy. You deliver it actually to them. And you can actually buy fax numbers to deliver these, these sort of adverts to dentists. Um, I used to, to try and find dentists um, uh, by fax, and it was always quite an effective way to, to market. I mean, when, when, when dentists come and ask me to help them set up um, squat practices, I, the most important thing is to get on with local businesses. I mean, that is vital. Um, and that is key to a successful practice because you do refer back and forth. And it, you know, beauty, beauty therapists are, are absolutely ideal for things like whitening. So I, will, I always used to march in, if I, whenever I set up a squat practice, I'd march in, I'd say to the beautician, the owner, I'd say I'd do free whitening. And then I'd say to the people who work there, I'd give them half price, price whitening. So that half price whitening, you know, it was covered. The cost was covered. But then the type of whitening would always be day whitening. Why? Because, you know, they'd have to be wearing their aligners in the day and they'd have them, you know, they'd be spluttering all over the patients and the patients would be asking what they've got in their mouth. They've got the whitening trays from the guy up the road. So, you know, I, I used to use the beauty, beauty therapists are probably one of the best people to get local businesses wise. Um, another, another area I feel is, is, is severely lacking is, is the leaflet drop. I mean, I've probably had one leaflet drop from a local practitioner in must be about 15 years. I mean, I'd probably try and do a leaflet drop every, probably every four months. You've got to have one side, you've got to have a really good um, um, USP or your unique selling point. And then the other side, 
I'm, I always wait for a, 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 an event. So it could be Brexit, it could be, uh, could be COVID. And on, on that side, um, on the reverse side, I always have breaking news. The reason for that is they will pick it up. If it's got breaking news and it falls on the floor the wrong side up, they'll pick it up because they'll think it's about COVID. And if they turn it round, you know, you've got to have a good, unique selling point on it. And bang, you've got patience. And that can be a really popular way to market your business. Um, and people always worry about, um, a, you know, leaflet drops in case, um, you know, the person delivering them just goes and, um, you know, bins them all up into the river, which is probably what I would have done as a kid. What you can have, you can actually have GPS tracking these days. So if you, you can go to... Um, Royal Mail. Royal Mail is a little bit more expensive, but if you go to another one of these smaller companies, you know, you, it, the actual delivery is, it is exceptionally cheap, but make sure they have GPS tracking on their delivery units. So you make you know that those, those that mail is going to those uh, the, the places that you want them to go to. And you can also make sure you pinpoint postcodes. So get to know your area. There is actually a software that you can use and it shows you the heat maps of the prices of the houses within the area. So make sure when you deliver those, these, those leaflets, you know, where they're going, they're going to good places and you're not wasting your money and they're not being binned off from the river. So like I said, do all your upside down adverts. The adverts can be put upside down, it's really cool. And you know, remember, like I said, hot topics. I mean, breaking news. I mean, this advert I went for years. That's all I had. I mean, you know, this is a free ad. That's 191 people shared and like that. And I just, you know, 51 shared. I didn't even know what they were sharing. I mean, all I said was private dentistry slash in Devon. And they went into it, came onto my website. And it's, it's a free type of marketing on Facebook. And it just encourages people. It's more than that um, single shot that people look at, the veneers or they're looking at. There's a line. We've got to move away from that. We are all scrapping for the, for the, for the scraps at the floor. Let's, let's look outside the box. Look outside for that advert that says, look, we're number two. We have to try harder. You know, I was someone copied me um, recently. I, I, had a, I had a discount marketing for Invisalign on an open day. And um, I offered a thousand pounds off because it included a lot of extras. And suddenly my local competitor did a really bad advert and said, we now offer one and a half thousand pounds. But, you know, it didn't affect the amount of new patients. But, you know, it, don't copy other people's adverts. Try and find your own way. Because people will just look at that and think, well, he's only doing it for that reason. It's not, it's not real. They're not, they're not genuine. So don't copy other people's adverts. If you have to copy someone's advert, Go to someone like Smile Direct Club and go look into their transparency section and look at the billions of pounds that they've paid on adverts. Um, if you go into the Facebook page on the lower right, it'll say transparency, chat, uh, page transparency, go into the page transparency and have a look at their adverts. Copy them. Don't copy a colleague. It's just, I just, there's something about it that's just not, it's just not real. And then it's not your passion. And then if it's not your passion, it's just wasted and it won't come through. Uh, I mean, I had tiger. I had these tigers running around my practice um, back in God, it was what 2001. Um, you know, I'd probably be struck off these days. But this, these tigers came from a patient of mine who worked in a zoo. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the film um, We Bought a Zoo with um, um, oh, Matt Damon. Now that, that that zoo was closed down because of the, the the health and safety. Maybe I was part of that closing down system. But these these little critters running around in my waiting room and the amount of new patients I got but however I definitely wouldn't recommend getting tigers running around in your waiting room. Okay so seek non-dentist opinion I mean we are all into class one um, class one occlusions we're into translucencies we're into you know we, we're into um, root treatments that look absolutely perfect or gums that are beautifully stippled you know I come home and I'll show my wife a picture and she'll go well What's all that about? I mean, I've been going for two years for this patient. Looks absolutely perfect, class one. So proud of it. And then I'll show my wife a picture of a, a, a little composite bonding and whitening. And she's more impressed by that. And I'm like that. My God, I've spent years doing this. So look, get a non-dentist's opinion because they see differently to what we see. So whenever I put any photographs out, I'll ask my wife. I'll, I'll ask her to have a look, give her opinion. And it does work. If you get that non-dentist's opinion, it, it matters. It matters because they are the people who you are, um, who you are buying from. Um, and, you know, the consumer isn't a moron. She's your wife. And David Ogilvy said that. And it is so true. We are not selling to dentists. I never put an advert out to, 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 without the thought of a non-dentist opinion or my wife's opinion. It's so, so important. 
So, I mean, the other thing I think we have to be very careful of is how honest our pictures are. I mean, you know, some of some of us will 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 have a have a put out a photo of a before and after uh, of one of our treatments, and it is just too good to be true. Um, and yet, I mean, some dentists can create far well, most dentists can create far far better results than me. And their, their photography is amazing, and it looks like it should be on the front of a GP magazine. But when it comes down to it, it has to be believable. Um, and you have to, you have to, you know, we, we aren't just marketing to GP magazines, or we aren't just marketing to models. We are marketing to real people with real feelings. Um, I mean, you know, that could possibly be true. You know, these these could possibly be true, but. Is it real? It, would that would that would that encourage you to go? No, I know this is an outlet. I mean, do you want something yellow on a metal pole sticking in the way? Yes, it's showing from another dentist's point of view that someone's done really well here. But is it is, is that what is that what is that what brings patients in? Shouldn't it be a smile? Shouldn't it be a, a more personal approach? I mean, I, I can't imagine how they managed that, but maybe they did. Um, but um, but still, even if they did, these shouldn't be. The one, the, the pictures that go out now. Um, I think, like I said, believable. Put your passion into it. Have more smiles. I've moved away from the, the, the close-ups, and I do like to see more smiley shots. If I can encourage people to come in on, you know, into the photo with me, then you know, all well and good. Make it real. Make it real. Make it personal. Now, you know, that brings me on to personal. Bringing people into it is the micro influencers. Oh yeah. Um, whenever a new patient comes through the door. Um, I try and find out what their Instagram page is and what their likes are. Any person between six and 10,000 likes on Instagram, gold dust. Now, they are the ones that are more grateful than the ones who have got 100,000 100, people following, and they'll do anything. They are just so grateful because they want to build their page. They, they want to be able to say, Grant will give you £100 off if you have some teeth whitening with me. Um, and so they get to build their page a little bit more. You don't have to sign any contracts with these people. They're in already for your treatments. You don't, they don't have to say it's an advert. So the micro-influencers between six and 10,000 are the ones that you really want to buy. And, you know, my expert, bribe them. Nothing is free. Yes, you may do free whitening with your Invisalign but you want something for it, you know, so, so check, you know, you can offer all your free whitening to all your, all your patients, but when you get that one through the door, you can say, we're, I'm happy to offer you free whitening, but hey, I can do a free bit of bonding, and in six months' time, I tell you what, if you write me free posts, uh, I'll give you a free top-up. Now, how much is that top-up? 60 quid? Now, they have just marketed three or four times to that point for the free whitening. Now, when they get to the point of the free whitening, you can turn around and say, sorry, you owe me three bits, three posts, and I tell you what, they'll post for you. But it, it comes from a better place than getting someone in who's got 100,000 likes, getting them to sign an order, getting them to sign a contract, then the stress of it, then they walk out and they might not like it, and they just don't go there. So micro-influencers do it. So get into the habit of, when they're in the chair, you talk about Instagram, try and see their Instagram accounts. Or of course, you know, there is a, the, the Instagram, Instagram that I share, so I'm reading that just now. So, you know, this is an easy way, an easy entry into it. And I always try and get on their feeds rather than them on my feed. I mean, this guy, England rugby player, absolute diamond. He is the only person, he has got about 150,000 150, people following. But he was brilliant, you know, rugby players, rugby players, footballers are really cool as well. But when you start doing the actual people who are who are uh, opinion leaders or, so, or, or they say they are in Instagram, I just stay well away from them. I'm, I'm not interested in that at all. But these guys, if you get a rugby player through the door, they're fabulous, absolutely brilliant. So, number seven, gimmicks. Now, you know, I've always loved gimmicks. They're cool, popular, and it makes you look like you're an outstanding success. However, the costs, they're expensive, it's stressful. You get the little five-year-olds who come and pick up your mirrors, and they walk out the door, and the whole family just empty the tray. So, you know, they are very, very cool. But the one has, has stood the test of time for me has been the toothpick. Now, you know, I'll go to all the local Indian restaurants, and I'll say, look, you know, would you give these out? And they are so cool. My local Indian restaurants are just so friendly and they're so welcoming. Every six months, I give them a massive bag of these. So when they get, you know, when they get their meat stuck between their teeth, there's my name. Absolutely brilliant. And they are cheap as chips. 
So, you know, you can get a bit more expensive if you want to look really cool. But the problem is, like I said, you'll get the whole family nicking one and walking out the door. But they're still very, very cool. If you can be selective, girls seem to love these um, love these little mirrors that they put in their bags. And when they flip it open, they've obviously got your name on the other side. So they are actually the only two little trinkets I have. They used to do pens, but pens are rubbish. People don't use pens very much. So marketing number eight would be a more of a marketing approach so i've got a few under this as you've noticed i haven't managed to get it down to my top 10 so i've started to try and put more into under one section so look you know i think I've, people always come and say to me look how can how can i start a squat in london and I, every time i'm like oh my lord i certainly would not start a squat in london anymore unless i was going to do something different i mean i've seen you know some of the guys in london who have started up and they've been and they, you know standing success at success and i'm just I'm, it's just but it's getting harder you know why make it diff difficult for yourself you know if you're going to go to london why not go for the patients or the 50 percent of the patients who who are frightened of going to the dentist so i spoke to um um a client a week ago and they said i'm thinking about doing for nervous patients and, and you know sedation and hypnotherapy and it was like music to my ears because like i said 50 percent of the population don't go for, because of fear now that 50 percent you know they are they're frightened yes but they want dental implants they want um invisalign and they will stay with you for a lifetime and you know that's the most important thing they will stay with you for a lifetime, lifetime if you gain their trust why are people in london not doing this why aren't they blogging which is such an undervalued part of marketing. It just makes you look like a specialist at everything. So, you know, if someone starts blogging, hit the therapy and all that stuff, I think you could write your own tickets. I mean, it's, 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 you know, you start writing about bad breath. If you start writing about loose teeth, you know, go for the lower end ticket items because they always lead onto bigger things. Um, you know, if you Google bad breath in Exeter, loose teeth in Exeter, I am always number one with my blogs and I've gone for them because the bad breath, that's what they're posting. That's what they're looking for first before they start looking for implants. Before they start looking for the Invisaligns, they're looking for why have I got gaps between my teeth? So start looking for the lower end ticket items and stop competing for the larger end. And like I said, number four, you know, don't compete for, for the same treatments. And you know what? Smile Direct is here. It seems to be staying. And that I think that is our future. And yet, are we, are we turning into, are we moving towards that type of online um, approach with our online consultations and all that sort of stuff? And that worries me a little bit. I mean, I have never done an online consultation. I still don't want to. Um, I, I don't think I'd like to. I find it hard enough to look at a little green light on the bottom of my screen. I prefer to you know, be seeing three, like three to four hundred years there. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, you know, Smile Direct is the future. And I do try and piggyback off Smile Direct a little bit. I will always say to my patients as they as they're sitting there and they're about to have um, Invisalign I will say Invisalign is not the only part of my treatment I will not send you braces in the post um, Invisalign is a part of the smile makeover that you're paying for and I'll be able to guarantee that smile makeover so we've got to almost separate ourselves from the online um, the online uh, treatments that are, that are coming on rather than embrace them but like I said, you know, it, it, it's a um, choice of, everybody has that choice. It's just, I prefer to just veer away from it a little bit. So number nine is, you know, let's get the patients through the door. I mean, you know, Derek from the group, Facebook man, he told me, he said to me one day, three, seven and 30 rule. I mean, 3% of the population are ready to buy. They're the patients that sit at your chair and you sort of say, you know, this is going to cost you three and a half thousand pounds for Invisalign and they go, ready i'm buying it and you're like that well i'm i'm, I'm finished with spiel yet but that's three percent of the population do that and you're left almost thinking oh that's an easy one then the next person to come through comes through it'll be part seven percent now that's seven percent oh do you actually want the treatment but aren't actually looking and then you get the 30 percent that could be swung either way now with patients with dentists who aren't providing a free consultation whether it is um, a, a, a fully refundable deposit. If you don't provide a free consultation, you are missing out on 37% of um, possible treatment um, uptakes. Now, if you're only going for the 3% and you're charging £100 or £80 for a, a full assessment, you're going to have an incredibly high conversion rate. So when um, we see online, we say my conversion rate is 100%, 
Oh, of course it is if you're charging £100, because I'd be ready to buy it. But, but you're missing out on 37% of the population who might be willing to buy. So I just think we should respect the patient's time. So free consultations, yes, but get a fully refundable deposit, respect their time. Don't always lead them off and, and put them to a TCO just because it's free. Now, I do know, you know, I do get a little bit stick in the background about my feelings about a TCO. Now, I, I do think there is definitely a place in the practice for treatment coordinators. I think they should be coordinating treatment. That doesn't mean diagnosing it. That doesn't mean the initial point of contact. I think the dentist should always be the initial point of contact. And then they then distribute them to the TCO or they can distribute them to the implantologist or the periodontist or, or, or whatever. But if, if you say to a person on the telephone, they phone up and they say, do you offer free consultations? Yes, we do. We, 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 we give them to the TCO. How does that work? I mean, it just doesn't, for me, it doesn't add up or show respect for a TCO. I do think that the, the dentist should see them first. And if then the, the, the treatment coordinator needs to coordinate the treatment so the patient doesn't get lost, I think that's brilliant. And that's where the strength of the TCO is coming. Not point of contact just because the patient isn't willing to pay because that means it for both sides. Um, so look, you know, if you want to offer free consultations, it, brilliant. And, you know, what, show them around the practice. I mean, just because, I mean, people do say there's no value in free. There is value in free. I'm here tonight. I'm not being paid. I don't know how many of you guys have paid, but I still value you. I still respect the fact that you've come to listen to me. So there's value. The value is time. The value is time away from family. It's patients away from their family. It's money that they put in their car. I just think that we need to respect people's time more. And as dentists, we are spoiled. We are, I am spoiled as a dentist. And sometimes I can get lost in myself and I expect patients to fly through the window with their mouths open and their wallets out, and they don't. So that's why I have to sometimes sort of re re regain my, my, my thought process and realize, yes, it's a free consultation, but they could be part of that 30%. Now, you know, everybody, hopefully, um, I, did a, I did a post when we, when we first had lockdown, and I said, look, everybody should create a local Facebook group. Now, the amount of new patients I've got from my... Devon Dental Free Advice Group. I mean, it's just, it's it's rubbish. It's just, I post the odd little thing here and there. Patients will ask questions, but people will come to you and they'll invite their friends along. I mean, it's an incredible way to um, to reach out to people, to, to connect to people. And that's what Drew's all about, connecting with people and connecting people together. And these Facebook groups do. And look, I'm sitting here because I created a free advice group, which is now, you know, 5,000 members. So these free groups are brilliant. And so, you know, everybody, every dentist in the area should, should create a group to provide free advice for, for, for people in the area. Now, very briefly, the rules and regs, you know, about advertising. Um, if you give free treatment for a patient and the patient then advertises that treatment, they have to say that it's a paid ad. I mean, you can do it very subtly, whatever, but look, get on their, you know, make sure you get yourself tagged on their page. That is, I think that's the most important way or the most effective way to advertise your practice. Let them use the word Botox. I don't even know if they're allowed to use it, but does it matter? You know, let them use the word Botox. And, you know, you could say when they're in the chair, look, I'll give you free white, and like I said, bribe them. I've done that so many times. I mean, this girl here, I, I um, did some um, 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 alignment and bonding, and it, it was one of those who have, who has about, I think it's about 10 or 11,000, and the uh, and, followers, and the amount of patience I've got from, from, from this girl is incredible. I mean, what she does, she says to all her, all her followers, she goes, 100 pounds off if, if any of my people who follow me or any of my friends go to the White House. So I probably, I probably got about 15, 16 braces from her. So what I did, six months later, seven months later, it got a little bit dry. I hadn't heard from her a while, so I phoned her up and I said, look, would you like your lower teeth straightened for free? Now, Invisalign, what, what would it cost? I7, because they're only slight rotations, probably cost me about 300 quid after tax, 200. So for 200 pounds, it's all gonna start off again. And did it start off again? It did. She posted another one saying she loved the top team. So bribery always works. And look, you know, when you've got the retention, um, you know, when when people phone up to reception, which was the other part of, of, of this of, of, of this evening's talk, mm -hmm. is you've got to move away from cost. Um, you know, 
when 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 I was building practices, I always found it very difficult to have staff training because when they when the person left, you go, oh god, we have to start training again. Or I didn't manage to get the same script that everybody could use. So all I do now is I just get everybody to ask five questions. I don't care what those five questions are. That's all I do. So when the patient rings up and they say, look, Grant, um, you know how much you know, or they say to the reception desk, how much is your Invisalign? Why do you want Invisalign? What, t- what, what is your upper arch? Is it your lower arch? Um, is it a particular occasion you want? Are you frightened of going to the dentist? And suddenly they forget about cost. And it works. I promise it works. If you get your receptionists to ask five questions, the minute the patient comes on the phone, you'll see the whole cost, the whole conversation turns around and then the cost is not such a big issue. And the reason for that is basically is the ladder of awareness. So if um, someone is ringing up and, and they want to know that the costs of something, nobody should be advised the costs until they're at least up at five or six. That is, that is key. They have, to, they have to see the benefits. Now, I mean, Ash knows all this inside out, but this is all I use. And, you know, they have to be ready to buy and they have to see the benefits. And, you know, if you're telling them the price that I have a problem, you know, they'll, they'll just walk away because also it's not the receptionist's place to, to tell them the price of an implant when just because they've got a gap, they may be able to have a bridge, they may be able to leave the gap alone. So hopefully, they certainly should be discussing costs. So I do tell my receptionists they are not to mention costs on reception. If, they, if the patient insists on the cost, and then they'll be, they'll, uh, then they'll get a full price list. Um, so obviously, we have to be open and honest as per GDC regulations. And the most important thing of all, I mean, this is vital. Um, and, you know, it's something to go away with in rocket science. Thanks for listening. Brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, amazing, actually. Loved it. Uh, really, really good tips there. Let's um, drop into questions and then uh, pass it on to uh, Ashley. Uh-